Okay, check out this track. Now what we have here, as you can see, those are what we call fiber ties. They're made of paper, pressed fiberboard. And this is old. This goes back, I think, to the, the 50s, maybe even earlier. And this is a very high copper content brass. And as you can see, it's, it's corroded so much it's green. And it's held on by these little staples. Next to that, we have two pieces of AHM flex track. This is probably from the 1970s. And as you can tell, it's a little lower, so it's not as high in copper as the older stuff. Um, but this track is super stiff. It's not flexible hardly at all because it's so old. This track is has uh, hasn't been used in decades. So let's find out if we can actually rehab it. Um, now if we take a look at the AHM, check, you can see the details on the ties. That really ain't that bad. It's not terrible. Okay, let's compare that over here to a more modern piece of lifelike nickel silver. And you can see it's got pretty big knobs on it. Um, it's still, it's not that bad. It's not terrible. Somewhere around here is some Atlas Flex Track too. But I don't remember offhand where it is. And maybe it's a little better. But check this out. The ties. They're not terrible. Um... There's a number of uses for this. Staging yards, storage. I personally have no problem using it someplace where I might run trains. And I'm going to show you what we do. So, I'm going to start with this fiber one. A lot of people say, oh, just junk it, get rid of it. You can't fix it, it gets wet and it gets ruined. But yeah, well, I'm going to go wash it in the sink. And then I'm going to polish it. Alright, so I've washed the track. As you can see, it's clean now. Okay, now here's the thing. When we started with this, it had no flexibility. But now, oh my goodness, just like new. That's from dish soap. And a little hot water, and it, it uh, it's totally workable. Beauty. Even this stuff is just a little bit... Now, this fiber stuff was meant to be a bit on the stiffer side, but it's workable. Okay, now, it's clean, as in there's no dirt on it. But how do we clean track? All right, here's the thing. Well, I've got three things here that I use for cleaning track. We've got Mothers, Never Dull, and Brasso. We're cleaning brass track. Uh, for nickel silver, uh, I've got um, uh, Noxon, another metal polish. I kind of use that on nickel silver. It works really good. But um, a lot of you guys have been, are under the impression that you use rubbing alcohol to do that, and that is just totally wrong. So why do people do it? What's the history of that? Well, you get your track down, you get some track laid down, and you ballast it, right? And you get all your perfect track work in. Problem comes, once you have the ballast down there, you can't use Brasso on it. It's really hard. You can't use this stuff on it. It's really hard. It messes up your ballast. But you can use this, Never Dull. Now, Never Dull is, open it, I can't. Good lord. Damn it. Alright. Using my scientific methods, I've opened a can of never doll. This is like this little cotton stuff in here. It's got metal polish on it. That's for super fine work. Okay. Now, alcohol. Guys use alcohol. One, because it evaporates real fast and disappears. Problem is, alcohol literally makes the black stuff that is the bane of your tracks. You don't clean tracks 
Tracks don't get clean because of alcohol. They get clean in spite of it. It's all elbow grease when you use rubbing alcohol. And as we now know from a variety of studies, um, it is the sparking of your wheels, which causes a little carbon burst to appear on the tracks. That's what makes your tracks and your wheels super dirty. Okay, now we have a fix for that, so that will not happen. We're going to do that after we clean. Right now, we are going to clean with Brasso and a toothbrush and a couple of microfiber cloths. Okay, and that's how we're going to do it. So I laid out this towel here, shop towel, and I'm going to clean this track that way. And then we're going to take a look at it again. Okay, we have gotten just crazy now. Check out this track. See how shiny that is? That's the AHM track right there. Yeah, there's a couple missing ties, but uh, we know how to replace ties, don't we? Of course. It curves in so smoothly now. You can see this. Check this out. It curves. Oh, perfect. Man, that's nice. I mean, you're familiar with working with lifelike, how it snaps back. This is just perfect for working. Oh man. I don't even feel that. That is just beauty. You can this brass is so nice on here that you could just get crazy. You can take the never doll, or if you want to get even crazier, you can go with the mothers. Now what we did is after we polished it using the toothbrush, um, what I did was I, I ran in the sink. After you use Brasso, you always wash it with cold water. Cold water. If you do hot water, you will get discoloration. Right now, it's really nice. Okay, let's look at this fiber tie one. I ran the track gauge down it. Excellent. And you see a little discoloration on it. This has real high copper content. But it actually, it's smooth now. You can bend it just the way you want and it'll stay. It's in gauge. Yeah, I put it in front of a fan. So I put a towel like this and I have a big fan that blows on low all the time and I just set this up there been up there 15 minutes and it's it's pretty much dry um, I could get crazy and polish out all the discolorations that are still there from this probably 60 year old track but I don't need to this track is, is ready to roll now the question is you're gonna be like, well it's still brass it still looks like crap because it's brass yeah, but we're going to paint it, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're going to paint it and make it look like decent track. And then, you're like, well, it's still brass and you're going to have to clean it all the time. Nope. No, we're not. After we paint it, the brass will be sealed inside the paint. Then, now if your guy does Pinewood Derby cars, you know where I'm going with this. I'm going to take sandpaper, 1,000 grit, across the top until I get a nice shiny rail. So if you're a Pinewood Derby guy and you know about axle polishing, you know exactly where I'm going with it from there. And then once we got the shine that we want, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead with this. We'll get the shine that we want on the top. And we're going to coat it with an antioxidant that is conductive. This track back here ain't been clean in like two years and there's no problem with it whatsoever. All them number four brass switches right there, a pile of them in a row. Snap switches that are brass. They were coated with the ox guard a couple years ago, never cleaned them even once. Not even one time and I have no problem with them. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. 
and it is going to be sweet as sweet can be because this track cost me well this track actually somebody gave me these guys but for that train show man it's like 25 cents a stick nobody wants it because they don't know what to do with it it's a good track though and you can do something with it and i'm going to show you what there it is all right so what i did after painting it i took some 320 sandpaper got the paint off then i took some 600 sandpaper and polished it I'm like oh my god now there's scratches on the rails and it's not going to work and it's going to get dirty and it's going to and it's going to nothing's going to work right it's going to be crap well if you don't know any better it's going to be crap but I'm having to say right now, that looks pretty damn nice, doesn't it? Got some good looking track. Even this fiber track. Got some good looking track. Look down them rails. I'd have to say they're looking pretty good. What do we do? We take our favorite stuff. The ox guard, right? We put it on our finger. We wipe it across the top of the rails. Then we leave it. Okay, it will turn to a film. It'll be greasy at first, but it don't matter if it gets on your wheels. It's conductive. But it will prevent the rails from oxidizing essentially forever. Okay, as long as you don't wipe it off, you will have a conductive surface basically forever. Unless you've got an extremely dusty room then the only method that I use to clean track, the only, is if it's real bad, there's a six, there's, whoop, if it's real bad, there's a 600. But generally, I wipe it with a 1000. Okay, and the little tiny scratches are filled in with the ox guard, makes it even more conductive. That is it, that is the only way I do it. I don't ever wipe alcohol on my track. Not ever. Not even a little bit. It literally does nothing other than dries out the top of the rail. And if there's anything around it, like your ballast and stuff, and you're going to end up making something that you don't want on your track. And yeah, I see it all the time. People do it all the time. They put rubbing alcohol on their track cleaning car and they run around the track. Then, your locomotive runs around on this super dry metal surface, sparks all over the place. And that's how you get dirty wheels, dirty track, and problems. No problems, right there. That's the stuff. Get it at, I get it at Lowe's. It's like three bucks for a couple years supply. That's how it works. I'm going to wipe it on this track. I really like the way this track looks. It is beauty. You remember that crap we started with? Do you remember this piece of fiber track? Let's take a look down the track. I'm saying that look, that's pretty good looking right there. I like it. Now, Oh, but you're going to still be able to see that it's brass. That depends on the color of your lights. If you use lights that are a warm color, it won't matter. Change your light bulbs. Change your light bulbs to emit a warmer color, more of a yellowish color on your layout. And you won't know if track is silver or brass. You, just, you won't be able to tell the difference. And the nice thing about, especially this stuff, this high copper content stuff, everything's going digital. And I'm going to tell you right now, I once went to a school in the Army about digital multiplexers, which is what DCC is. It sends a signal through this. And your copper rail is going to give you a better digital signal it is going to be more responsive than your nickel silver it just is and maybe it's just a millisecond's worth of difference but maybe that's all the difference you need all right 
that is it. That is how you do it. That is the only way I do it. And we're going to move on to the next section.